Hello, boys and girls. Today for Rock and Read, I'm going solo. Um, we're going to read the True Gift chapters three and four. Um, if you remember from yesterday, Liam, he's really concerned about White Cow because White Cow's by himself. So, chapter three says, Mama and Papa have gone. It's quiet in the house. My bedroom overlooks the short dirt road that winds down to the town with its two markets and the elementary school, the post office, and the lilac library. Liam's bedroom overlooks the meadow, the big barn, and white cow. The moon is higher when I walk into Liam's room. Liam is looking out at the meadow. Snow has dusted everything, and the moon outlines trees and bushes and the shining brook that runs through the fields. Liam, I say softly. He turns. What? You know what, Liam. We're going to take walks and read books and shop for Christmas gifts for everyone and help Grandpa and Gran and go to the library. We are going to have fun, right? Liam looks at me steadily, the same look he had when he was four years old, trying to figure out how to read. Right. He turns back to look out over the meadow. And feed White Cow. I always feed White Cow and Rosie when she was here. Liam, I speak more softly because I've hurt his feelings. What? You are a worrier. Liam turns to look at me. So are you. White Cow is fine. She's happy in the field and in the barn. Baby. Then he turns to take his books out of his book bags and stack them one by one by one on bookshelves by his bed. Baby, he repeats. In the morning there is sun. It pours in my window, tumbling across the quilt. I can smell coffee and breakfast downstairs. Gran and Grandpa are at the kitchen table. Morning, Lily. There's juice and fresh muffins. Uh-oh, my lights just went out. <laughs> Sorry about that. Good morning. Where's Liam? He's in my study, said Grandpa. I have to go to work now. There must be some news somewhere to print. Grandpa works at the newspaper in town. He kisses the top of my head. Want to come to work with me, Lammy? Grandpa's the only person in the world who calls me Lammy. I'm going to walk to town later. Liam will come too. Hey, he's pretty busy in there, Lily. You may never dig him out. Liam is surrounded by Grandpa's books and papers. He stares at a large book open in front of him. What are you doing? My voice seems loud in the quiet room. Liam jumps and closes the book with a thump. That's it. I know that tone. I know, Liam. Show me. You might as well show me. You won't like it. I know I won't, so show me. I pull up a chair and I sit close to him and Liam sighs and opens the book and he thumbs through the pages and then he stops and there it is. I lean over and I read. Cows are social beings. Cows have feelings. They have been known to bear grudges. They live in families and are capable of grief, loss, and loneliness. I look at Liam. There's more. I shake my head. I reach over and I close the book. I have to do something about White Cow. I am suddenly so angry that I can hardly think of what words to say. You dumb boy. You are so dumb. I was right. You will spoil Christmas. It will be all your fault. Liam gives me that steady look. I have to do something, he says again. You can blame me. You can blame White Cow if you want. Liam opens the book again, ignoring me. I feel surprising tears fill my eyes. Liam pays no attention to me. Liam reads some more, and then he looks at me. 
I think we should walk to town. Why? I ask. Because that is what we do when we come here at Christmas. I can't think of anything to say. And now we've reached chapter four. We put on our coats and hats and mittens in the warm kitchen. We're going to go see White Cow first, Liam tells Gran. I thought you probably would. She hands me some money. This is for some butter from the market and these letters need to be mailed. Outside it's cold and bright. It feels like frost on my nose. We walk down the length of the fence looking for White Cow. She's not in the meadow. His breath comes out in puffs in the winter air. We open the gate and we walk through the snow-covered grass to the barn. The barn is old and it smells like hay and the winter breath of all the animals that have lived here. We stop as we enter, both of us, because this place is huge. The roof is so high, it reminds me of the picture of a cathedral I once saw in a book. There are stalls and many bales of hay and barrels with covers that hold grain. Parts of the floor are all old wood and our boots slip. Isn't that a great picture? I wish I could draw. That would be so cool. Parts of the floor are old wood and our boots slip on the smoothness. Slices of light from the windows fall across the wood. White cow! Liam says suddenly. There's a shuffle of noise at the far end of the barn, and White Cow walks out of his stall, of a stall. She slowly walks towards us. She stops. She is so big and white. Liam talks to her in his soft voice. Poor girl, you good girl. Come here, girl. White Cow comes close and suddenly leans against Liam. He's almost knocked off his feet by the affection of White Cow, but he doesn't fall. My heart beats faster. Lily, his voice comes from somewhere behind White Cow. You're scared. She's just big. She can't help it. Scared? Am I? Am I scared? Come closer, Lily. I walk closer and I reach out a hand and I stroke her long white side. She's warm. She turns to look at me for a moment and I am surprised by her eyes. We stay with White Cow a long time in the sweet smelling barn and when we finally walk to the barn door so we can go to town, White Cow follows us and stands in the doorway. More than once we turn walking backward and we still see White Cow watching us from the barn the doorway framing her like a picture frame. We are mostly silent as we walk down the road, down the hill, past several houses that are scattered along the way, past a field bordered by red bayberry bushes. I was right. Nothing is the same now. Liam doesn't answer. Nothing. Liam still doesn't speak. How did you know I was scared of White Cow? I asked finally. I turn and I look at him. I just do. You don't know her the way that I know her. We walk quietly. The fields are snow coated, the only green, the spruces and the white pines in the fields and the sky, it's gray. <sighs> We've got to buy a cow. I stop walking, but Liam walks on. You can't do that! You're a kid! A girl on a horse comes up the hill, the horse peering closely at me, its hooves quiet on the snow-covered road. I run to catch up with Liam and we walk together, not speaking. I take a breath and I know that I'll be sorry that I ask the question that I'm going to ask. How can we buy a cow? He turns and he grins brightly. I don't know, but we will, he says. And that, that's what you call a hook. So tomorrow, either one of us or both of us will read chapters five and six. You guys 
get your independent work done and have a lovely day and I'll see you tomorrow.